This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to focus specifically on the offline online process for 8K, 4K, 2K, basically larger than HD projects. Now, I did cover this a little bit way long ago in a previous lesson, but not as in-depth as I want to cover it here because I think it's an important process, more so because I see a lot of questions asked about it on the Avid Editors of Facebook page. So I don't want to take too long in the intro, I just want to get into Media Composer and I want to get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And basically, everything is going to start right here at the Project Selection window. Now, remember, the most important part of this entire process is making sure that you set your project up correctly. Now, when I say that, it's not necessarily important to know the exact raster dimension that your sequence is going to be. The only thing that matters is getting this frame rate set correctly. Now, for the purposes of this lesson, I've decided to go with a 24 frame per second frame rate. Now, you're going to see why in just a little bit, so keep that idea in the back of your head. Now, the reason that it doesn't really matter what the raster dimension is, is that because we're going to be getting in and doing an offline and an online, we're actually going to be using a couple of raster dimensions. Specifically, first for the offline, I'm just going to use a regular HD 1920 by 1080 raster dimension with this 24 frame per second timeline. As far as what our final output's going to be, whether it's going to be 2K, 4K, 8K, it doesn't really matter because we can easily set that inside of our project without having to worry about coming back to this screen and attempting to create a new project or anything like that. So once you have your project set where you know the frame rate is set correctly, and in our case, we have our raster dimension set for the offline, let's now get into our project and let's bring our media in. All right, now that we're in our project, we're ready to bring in some media. And it's good that we're going to talk about media now because depending on the type of larger than HD media that you are working with, you might require a plugin to work with it, but not a plugin in the sense of a third party AVX plugin, but a plugin that's going to let you be able to access that media inside a Media Composer. Now, the footage that I'm working with is red footage. So let me just open my bin here. And if I went and tried to link to this media in the state that let's just say that I'm in right now with no extra plugins installed, I would actually get an error when I tried to import it telling me that Media Composer can't import or link to the four clips that are contained within the red file folder. So I'm going to need that third party plugin. So let's get it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to Command or Alt and Tab into Google Chrome here. Let me just resize my window so it fits in the frame. And you'll see where I am right now. I'm at avid.com slash plugins slash AMA dash plugins. And you'll see that we have a whole bunch of different plugins that we can download. Now, some of these, depending on what they are, for example, the Drastic Media Reactor Lite plugin is actually a paid for plugin. But the one that we're going to be using for the red plugins is not. You'll see that it's right here. I can simply click on download now. I'll be brought to the Avid white page here. And I can just come down and download the Windows or Mac version of the plugin install it, launch Media Composer, and I'll be all set to go. So let's just quit out of Chrome now and let's bring in our footage. I'm going to right click in the project window and I'm going to come down to input and I'm going to select source browser. Now you'll see that Media Composer remembers the last folder that I was in and when I was doing prep for this tutorial I was of course in the red footage folder. And if you're not familiar with red footage you'll notice that inside the folder there are other clips that actually contain not only the R3D file, but other files as well. This is where I was saying that Media Composer was getting confused when I didn't have the plugin installed. So once you have it installed, all you got to do is simply select all the folders. You don't need to select the actual clips themselves. Once you select all the folders and say link, Media Composer will take a second or two and it will bring those clips into your bin. You can see them appearing in the background there. And again, like I said, in a matter of seconds, all of these clips will be ready to go. Now, right now, I only want to focus on the clips that are 24 frames per second, okay? So I'm just going to select like the first five or six of them here. I'm just going to delete all the other ones for right now. Now, remember, these are linked clips, so nothing has actually been imported. I'm just going to double click on them here. There we go. 
And what's important to keep in mind here, and I've actually set up a bin view specifically for a, I called it a 4K project workflow, but it could really be any size, 8K, 2K, because I wanted to get a few pieces of information that are gonna be essential to this workflow. One is the raster dimension, one is the source location, okay? Now, when you're getting ready to do your offline, there's a couple decisions that you're going to need to make. Now, an offline is just that, it's an offline. It's designed for you to really just get in and assemble your show exactly the way that you need it assembled. You know, in my case, I'm actually working off a USB hard drive. So to be honest, you know, working with a few clips with red, probably okay, but I probably wouldn't want to work on a one to two hour show with all these 2K, 4K, and 8K clips because I can only imagine what the playback quality will be. So this is why we're going to do an offline. Now, the decision that you have to make right off the bat is do you care about whether your footage looks stretched or not? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, because we're going to be doing an offline, I'm just going to head back over to my format tab here for one second. You'll see my raster dimension, 1920 by 1080. So the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. However, the aspect ratio of these clips is not 16 by 9. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to select all the clips. I'm going to right-click on them, and I'm going to come to their source settings. Let me just drag the window over here a little bit. Now, I am in the FrameFlex window, but let me actually jump over a couple tabs first because depending on the type of footage you're working with, and since I am working with red footage, you might actually get access to some parameters that come along with the clips that you can get in and adjust and even bake into the clips when you transcode them to work with them in your timeline. Now, I'm going to leave this for right now because I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of red footage and how you can get in and make these adjustments to adjust things like exposure, brightness, contrast, and even saturation. Now let's come back to the frame flex tab for just one second. I want to point out that with this clip, or these actually these group of clips, that they're actually a 2 3, three to 1 aspect ratio. Now how do I know this? Well I know this because right at the top it's telling me what the raster dimension of the clip is. Now in this case it's clips because they are actually all the same raster dimension. So what I'd like to do, just for the purposes of my own sanity and not having to listen to the producer or director constantly saying, that looks stretched, is it stretched? Is it stre Are you sure it's not stretched? Are you sure? I'm actually just going to set these universally to be a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and cut off the left and right hand side of the frame. So how we do that is very simple. With our frame flex window that's going to represent our frame, I'm not going to choose a 2, 3, 3 aspect ratio. I'm going to choose a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and you'll now see that that frame flex window is now a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, our image has been adjusted properly, and instead of saying OK, I'm going to apply that to all. So now all of my clips will now have that specific frame flex setting of 16 by 9, and we'll be all set to go. Now what's important to keep in mind, and I'm going to mention this again once we've actually gone through the high res process of this whole workflow, that you're going to want to get in and make adjustments after the fact. But let's leave that for now. Put that in the back of your head because we will come back to it. I'm now going to say cancel. I'm not going to say OK because we've already done that. And let's now get in and let's transcode this footage. Now the reason that I picked 24, and I'm going to stick with 24 for right now, is because depending on the version of Media Composer that you're using, you may or may not have the ability to transcode clips at their native frame rate. Now this is a very important workflow step because if you don't have the ability to transcode multi frame rates in a specific project, it's just gonna lead you to a whole ton of headaches down the line. Now with these clips here, we're gonna work at DNX HD 36 for the purposes of our offline. So I have all of the clips selected. What I can do is I can either navigate up to clip and come down to consolidate transcode, or of course, as always, we can right click on the clip and select Consolidate Transcode. Now inside the Consolidate Transcode window, we do want to transcode this media. I will select the drive it's going to. Now, here's where things get interesting and you have to pay attention to what you're doing. I am using the most recent version of Media Composer. You'll notice over here, we have the choice to keep the source's frame rate or convert to the project's frame rate. Now this is a little bit deceiving. Because we're working in 24 frames per second, all the clips we've brought in are 24 frames per second, we're just going to convert them to the project's frame rate because it doesn't matter because they match the project's frame rate. Now, if I had 2398, 24, 25, 2997, all of that inside of the same project, we would want to we would want to keep the source's frame rate the way that it is. Now, what's the big difference? Well, if I leave this as convert to project's frame rate, you'll notice the different 
codecs that I have access to, DNX HD 36, 80, 115, 175, based on this 24 frames per second, okay? However, as soon as I wanted to use multiple frame rates in this project, you'll now see that because I am on a Mac, I have actually access to four extra codecs, the Apple ProRes ones, but you'll now see that we're working in DNX HRLB, low bandwidth, SQ, standard quality, high quality, and high quality 10-bit. Now, this is a resolution independent codec, meaning I could use a square frame or square uh, raster dimension. I could use uh, an up and down aspect ratio. It really doesn't matter. Now, again, for the purposes of what we're doing, because we are all in that 124 frame per second frame rate, I'm going to select convert to projects frame rate, and I'm going to choose DNX HD 36. Now, one thing I do like about this workflow is the fact that I can actually see how much space is required. You'll see it's about 558 megabytes. Once we have everything set the way that we want, we're simply going to come down and say transcode. Now, Media Composer will transcode all this media to DNX HD 136 and will be all set to go to create our offline. Now, we're going to wrap things up for this lesson here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create our 1080p offline timeline. And in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how you can not only then take your offline and relink it to that original 4K media for your online, but I'm also going to show you how this situation works with multi frame rate timelines and why having the most recent version of Media Composer in this case is exceptionally beneficial because it's going to give you that extra feature to get this job done as smoothly as possible. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.